Hello everyone, and welcome back to Make Believe, where we're playing the house in Fata Morgana. Last time, um, Mel tried to conquer the silver hair girl, but she wasn't really up for it, and seemed to be rejecting his approaches. However, after talk of the priest, and him having yet another one of those nightmarish days, he finds her at his bedside, attempting to choke him, but unable to do so. He then proceeds to talk to her calmly, as if ignoring the hand at his neck, and after hearing her backstory and her goals, it seems he ends up convincing her. And so, I'm curious to see where that's, this relationship's gonna lead. A slow killing poison. Oh, okay. No, no, Nelly. You love the teeter, so don't look so cross. Hmm. <laughs> Nellie was out with a man other than her brother that evening. A rare sight indeed. And she was quite clearly in a foul mood. She went to the theater. I wonder if Mel and the silver hair girl are gonna be here. Oh, okay, we have lyrics. I guess it's the theater. I will not stand for this, that I should have to marry a man as disagreeable as Arthur. Oh, that's the man. It's unthinkable. The young man at her side was Nellie's fiancé, selected by her parents. On any other occasion, she, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who was not male. But she had little to say in this matter. She was for lack of a better word, forced to go out with him. And oh, how fiercely she had fought against it. She had shoved aside the big ale trying to fasten her corset, locked herself in her room, and sobbed for quite some time. Excuse me, music, I'm trying to read here. It required the combined effort of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her date. Come now, you should at least pretend you're enjoying yourself. Or do you want people to think we don't get along? Do we get along? Well, I want to, for what's worth. What it's worth to you is my name, not me. Are you really going to be like that? I don't hear him say no. I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play. The least you could do is be a little kinder to me. What was it called again? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six or seven years now. A family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play at a theater full of commoners? It may be private, but even so, I would rather just have a show put on my on at my state. Stop talking already. Why should I why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I'll talk to father as many times as I, as I must. Please, don't make such a scene. It's shameful. There are people around. Remember, you represent your family here. Besides, our families are hardly strangers to one another. Try as you might, I doubt you can get rid of me. No matter what you say, you can't break this engagement. You don't... Your parents gave you too much freedom, girl. Look at what a spoiled little girl you, be you became because of it. Goodness, you're gonna be quite the handful. Oh, 
Get off your high horse. No, you're the one on the high horse, Nelly. You are going to be my wife. You could at least put some effort into liking me. What happens when I take you to a social engagement and you act like this? It's shameful to the both of us. This coming from someone who used to call me Lady Nelly. What's your problem? When you choose to act like a lady, I'll gladly call you that again. Goodness gracious. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. Oh, I mean, figuratively, I think my shoes are too big for you. I have to marry a bratty little girl because it will help my family. How dare you talk to me that way? You're not a damn princess. Open your eyes. If you think talking to your father will get you out of this marriage, you're welcome to try. I doubt you'll have it, though. Otherwise, you can just go complain about it to your friends. Oh, that's right. As far as I'm aware, you don't have any friends. Okay, first of all, that's a burn. Second of all, you're not helping the situation or the, if you're trying to make her at least try to like you, like, shame her on not having friends, it's certainly not gonna help. Enough. As you wish. This is so frustrating. Why should I have to listen to this jerk mock me? I have Mel. Your brother? I know. If father won't listen to me, I'll ask Mel to talk to him. Mel will be able to convince him. I'm not sure that's how it works. Come on now. Your favorite play is about to start. Oh, so this whole music's not part of the play? Maybe you should face forward for once. Enjoy it while it lasts. You won't be talking down to me much longer. Okay, thank you. <gasps> what? Hmm? Is that... Yep. I imagine she found Mel with the silver hair girl. Wait, Nelly. Get back here. What is that damn child problem? I didn't give her permission to leave. Yeah, and here's a problem with this whole thing, like him giving her permission to leave. I get it, it's like the old times, but ugh, still irks me a little. Father will be sure to hear about this. I cannot have the roads making any more of a fool of me. Yup, there they are. Uh, I, I, you're fine. Don't be shy. Oh, look at her with a dress. But so many people are looking at me. <laughs> That's because you're gorgeous. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you, that's not the case. It is true you have an unusual appearance. But right now, the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes are all served to accentuate your beauty. Mm. You sound like a prince, Lord Mel. What? Uh, you, you think so? I mean, I did say it, I'd be a standing prince for you, but... I think you're a wonderful prince. Not just a stand-in. Which makes you my princess then. I... I don't... Aww... Uh, you're supposed to say, yes I am there. You're gonna make me sad. Uh... Um... I... <laughs> Guess I'll just have to keep working at it until you submit. Oh, hey, the play's about to start. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Nothing particular. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there's one tiny thing. Yes? If I start dozing off, could you maybe wake me up every now and then? 
<laughs> ah. Hmm. No. What? Yep. Dearest Mel. Look at the situation. <gasps> Nelly? Dearest Mel, why are you... What are you doing here? I... I... I asked her to join me. It's nothing to get worked up over. It is. It absolutely is. How many times did I ask you to come with me and you wouldn't? You don't even like theater, your smell, and you brought her? You're right. I'm not especially fond of plays, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Nelly? She's not suitable for you. Please don't tell me. Please don't say that you're. What? She isn't good enough for you. Why would you choose her? She's creepy and you have no idea where she came from. Don't talk to her. her don't talk about her like that, Nelly. But you don't even know who her family is. I do. What? Uh, Lord Mel? It's fine. You just stay quiet. Like the other maids, she comes from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house that is. No, you're lying. That can't be. She's... but she's... she doesn't act like a lady. She likes etiquette, and she probably can't even dance. You expect me to believe someone like her is from a good house? Enough already, Nelly. Oh, oh, look at Nelly's face there. M Mel yelled at me. But yeah, she definitely act like a spoiled kid. You have my word. You don't have to worry about her. So please, stay out of this, Nelly. It isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But, but dearest Mel... You need to stop hanging all over me, Nelly. And find someone for... Wait. What are you doing at the theater anyway? Are you here alone? Uh, oh, yes, dearest Mel, about that. I have a favor to ask to you. I've been wanting to talk to you about this since yesterday, but I haven't seen you at all. Settle down, Nelly. What is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me, and he picked Arthur, that disagreeable little... Oh, right, that. I already know. What? I heard it from Father. That reminds me. You didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now. It was because of your engagement. D dearest Mel, is that who you're here with today? In that case, you should get back to him, rather than waste any more time with us. You knew I didn't want to get married, Mel. So why? Why didn't you talk father out of it? Because it's your time, Nelly. If there's someone else you'd rather be with, then, well, you can try to persuade your father, but... You're the only prince for me, dearest Mel. See, there's the problem, girl. Don't become a brocon. Just... You have, you gotta move on from your childish... Uh, from the clinging that you had when you were a little kid. The prince always grants his princesses wishes, doesn't he? I just want you to say you do that for me, dearest Mel. Lady Nelly, you stay out of this. And just like Arthur wasn't helping his case, you're not helping your case, Nelly. This pe these people really gotta learn how to get on people on their target's good side. It's all your fault. 
It's all because you showed up and played your little tricks on him. Oh, I saw the, I saw the head movement. That was nice. The little details. I warned you about this rat, dearest Mel. She's not suitable for. I told you I had enough already. Him stepping up in front. Ooh, this laugh. How much longer are you going to continue acting like a child? I can deal with you being a spoiled little girl, but how dare you be so derisive to someone else? M Mel, hit me. L Lord Mel. Go on, the show's about to start. People are giving us dirty looks. Return to your betrothed betroth now. I will apologize to him afterwards as well. You said you always be by my side. Come on, Ellie, you need to grow up. That you always be my prince. The time for make believe is past, Nellie. No, no, I refuse to believe it. I would not have it. Nellie? My goodness, that girl. Are you not going to go after her, Lord Mel? What are you talking about? The show is starting. No, just let her go. The only place she even has to go is home anyways. I just wish she'd start acting a little more like an adult. You know, it's been a couple of years now. I imagine Lady Nellie simply... Hmm? She what? Mm, no. It just wasn't my, my intention to get between you. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault we had an argument. But you are so close. And that's where the problem lies. See, uh, Nellie's not putting a line between them. She's keep wanting to keep them close at the hip at all times, even when they're grown up. Well, yeah, we're siblings, so we're close, but nothing more, I hope. I do care about Nellie, and I enjoy spending time with her, but she's my sister, nothing more. Anyway, sorry for making such a scene. No, I... I imagine she left her betrothed behind without saying anything. So, I'm gonna go apologize to him. We have to keep up appearance after all. Stay here. I'll be right back. Very well. Hmm. Master. Master, what are your thoughts on the tale so far? Which one of the siblings do you think was in the right, Master? The brother or the sister? Now, am I actually going to be given a choice? Oh my, I apologize for that abrupt question. I do think it's the brother. Did I startle you? What do I think? Hmm, yes, I believe Mel was probably right. As do I. He was also surely happier than her. As Mel had anticipated, Nellie fled from the theater, leaving her fiancé behind. She forced her way into a carriage, stopped outside, probably one called for a different nobleman, and ordered it to take her home. Look at, look at the mess she's causing. Mel's assumption was correct. The only place she had to return to was the mansion. The sun was beginning to set, and as a young lady, she could not simply go wandering through town alone, nor did she have any acquaintance to take her in. Her world was in essence, composed of two elements, her brother and the Rose Garden. They were the light of her life at Rose Manor. She lived a very isolated existence. Is this her room? <laughs> when she skated back home, Nellie went straight to her room locked the door, and began sobbing. The waves of her sorrow came crashing 
effortlessly over the leads. Tears streamed through the cracked walls of the dams, blocking her tear ducts. Wow. What a sentence to talk about her crying. Tears streamed through the cracked walls of the dams, blocking her tear ducts. Uh, why? Why? Why won't you help me, Mel? Why won't you take my side? Look, you can't always be taking your side, girl. The decor in her room appeared blurry through her damped eyes. Memories of the day she had redecorated played back in her mind with crystal clarity. She told me she had no feelings for you. That liar. That liar. She let her emotions roam wild, breaking glass craftworks, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, all sort of things. Yeah, Nelly needs to learn how emotions change. And it was more Mel falling for her than really the girl doing anything about it. In fact, she wanted to kill him. <laughs> it was as though a beast had been sent loose in her bedchamber. The vase she tossed shattered against a painting hanging on the wall. Oh, is that the painting of them as children? Spring water porcelain and roses in every direction. It was the portrait she adored so dearly of her and her brother. Yup. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And in what appeared to, to her like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mounting and came crashing to the floor. And what caused it to fall? You, Nelly. Your temper tantrums. Nelly darted over and scooped it up. The frame had broken, but the painting inside was unharmed. Uh, look at that. The two smiling children were still ver the very image of happiness, inseparable siblings gently holding one another's hand. My prince is no more. Though in her present state of mind, the image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. And the worse she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and kind boy of her past. The princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nelly. Some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believed you will, oh, would always be there for me. Now, hold on. You said yourself that you would be, like, he would be your prince until he found himself another princess. Okay? It was part of your contract agreement thing you did. This painting, it's nothing. But a lie. That's not the real Mel. That's not the real me. It's all a big fat lie. A lie. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, she's ripping the, the painting apart. I wish this painting never existed. That it was never made. That I never had a brother. Oh, wow. A child's temper tantrum at its finest. This painting, this painting. Ah, ah. In a fit of emotional distress, she scratched fever feverishly at the painting she once considered precious. She put more force into her fingers than she, or perhaps anyone, might have imagined she could. Flakes of paint began f falling off the canvas, and in time, she noticed something peculiar. Oh? Huh? 
what is this writing? Oh, I see it up here. Something's hidden beneath the paint. Just a little more. Hmm. A date? Why would that be hidden? What could it be for? Completed. Completed. May 1587. 1587. She read aloud defeated, scratch up, handwritten, handwriting. After staring blankly at the text for some time, the color in her face began to drain. What is this? How. How could this have been painted 16 years ago? Oh, the plot twist. Ba -na -na. I, I, I wasn't even born yet then, and Mel would have been just a baby. I'm guessing Mel's like 18 and she's 15, I think. I forgot the difference between their ages. Is this not me? Is this not Mel? There's still more writing. Urge on her by her rapidly pounding heart, Nellie feverishly scratched away at the painting. Even as her clean pink fingernails were soiled with fragments of paint and blood, she did not stop. <gasps> she was so overwhelmed by trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen. Something indescribable, incomprehensible. Th this is how I envision... Th this is how I envision your son and our unborn daughter might look several years from now. Your son and our unborn daughter. So this was a painting of the future then it really is of me and Mel. No. Use your head, stupid. I'm only 14. 16 years ago, I would not have been inside mother. But then... But then who is this? And hold up. Uh... Yeah, she's 14. I think I said 18 and 15, so she's 14. Yeah, I guess getting engaged this age would fit this area, era, right? I'm not a, a, like a history expert, but I think it would fit here. Like from 14 and up. But then, but then who is this? Who is that holding Mel's hand? Who is that with my brother? More. More there ha there has to be. Uh, ow. Found it. There's some more writing. I have to know what this is. Was that now is this um the silver hair girl's father's painting? That's what I was thinking. Once the writing appeared, like I thought that was it. I have to know what this is. Calm down. Calm down, Nelly. It's nothing to get worked up over. I I'm sure it's nothing. Calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. If our unborn child... This is what the writing on the painting said. If our unborn child does not have your hair color, then you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. I will be punished and my life made miserable. So and so I pray that this child might have flexing hair. Okay, now theory time. So the silver hair girl it's actually a half sibling of Mel's. They have the same mother. And because the child that was born 
clearly had white hair instead of this um I think it's like kind of golden hair the father was able to tell that it was not his and that's how the painter got expelled and his reputation was ruined and of course he didn't tell that part to his daughter so she just took in that they hated his paintings for some reason and she was mad at that at the Rhodes family even though she tackling is half roads that's what I'm getting from this though it is a sin to which she has in her a trace of me I do hope it is a girl mm. what what am I reading don't get it. Someone, tell me, what does this mean? A painting from 16 years ago. Hair color, sin. I do hope it's a girl. Yes. It's Nellie. Let me in. Lady Nellie? Oh, you changed out of your dress. That's a shame. It looked nice on you. <laughs> it really did look so nice. Almost like you were a princess. Who are you and what did you do to Nellie? I'm very suspicious right now. Um, Lady Nellie? Say, I got a question for you. Do you mind? B by all means. What color hair did your father have? Yeah, she has the same suspicion as me. I beg your pardon? Did you not hear me? Should I repeat the question? N no, I assume it would be about Lord Mel. I'm just so curious about where you got that white collar from. Uh, I, I, my father was more tan than white, so I didn't inherit my paleness from anyone. I ask about your father's hair color. Well, why would you want to? There's no reason you can tell me, is there? My father um had white hair. But that was simply because he was an older man. I do not think he was born with... <laughs> the Lady Nellie? <laughs> hmm? Hey, guess what? I figured it out. I figured it all out. Hmm? <laughs> And it was so simple. And she had some information that neither the silver hair girl nor Mel have. I wonder if she thinks they know that. There's only one difference between you and me. The thing that Mel fell for is... Um, I don't like that sound. Nelly's becoming a yandere. Why do you have those? N no, stay back. Oh. I don't know if she attempted to kill the silver hair girl or she cut her hair. Clearly we know which one's worse, but I still wish n neither of those happened. Uh, we have finally reached this point in the tale, Master. If your memory has been refreshed, then we can return to the mansion immediately. Very well, then. If you insist, Master, we shall proceed with the story. Hold on, let me get a... Get a drop of water.
It was a stormy night, much like the one the white-haired girl had first arrived on. It was quiet as a crypt in the mansion, not a single light visible in the halls. The house sat in wait for the sun to peek out over the horizon. The darkness is, generally speaking, of course, something that rushes by like a gust of wind as we sleep. The flaxen hair young man, too late in bed, pale blue moonlight sporadically streaming through the gaps in his drawn velvet curtains as he attempted to submit to slumber. He was having difficulty drifting off, but as time trickled onward, he drew closer and closer to the arms of Morpheus. Morpheus. Like... I'm really impressed with the writing in this. How they can express such simple acts with such long and vivid uh, sentences. Mm. Suddenly, he sensed a presence in the room, much like the one from those nights some weeks earlier. Did someone there answer me? A slender, feminine finger pressed gently against his lips. There was no hostility in the motion, but rather a great deal of affection. I'm scared that it's young Barry Nelly that's doing this. You're the silhouette faintly visible in the dark room was the same as that night. Okay, so it's the silhouette air girl. A flash of lightning shone through the drawn curtains. Illuminating her beautiful white hair. Hold up. Don't tell me that Nelly took her hair for herself. Several silky locks spilled over her shoulders and brushed against Mel's cheeks. A couple soft puffs of air tickled his face as though she were silently laughing. He assumed her fingers held against his lips, was her way of telling him to stay quiet. She began to slowly, delicately trace the outline of his mouth, moving down his cheek and along his jawline as if over porcelain. You're, um, rather more forward than I remember. Oh, well, I suppose you always were quite daring in one way or another. This isn't the first time you sneak into my bedchamber. The boy said in an attempt to conceal his surprise. Do you remember the night she came to exact revenge on him for her father? Indeed, she had proven herself to be a rather bold girl once already. It's dark. I can't see you very well. Why don't I light a lamp? Or perhaps we could open the... Before he could finish, the white-haired girl sealed his lips with her own. Yeah, yep, I, 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 I'm like 95% sure that's Nelly. Uh, in the near total darkness of his bedchamber, the two shadows appeared as one. They remained that way for several minutes. Their kiss was innocent no more than the pressing together of two pairs of lips. And at the same time, the white-haired girl lovely ran her fingertips across his skin. When their lips separated, Mel guessed for air. It seemed he had been holding his breath. Slightly embarrassed at himself, he said, Dearest Mel, Yeah, you can see the eyes. Uh, creepy. Nothing. He could not speak. The silhouette hanging above him was certainly the white-haired girl's. Or was it? 
because his next words were, Get off me! He reflectively shoved the girl straddling him aside. She rolled off the bed, landing on the cold floor, but slowly, gradually, she crawled her way back towards him. That wasn't very nice. Veiled in darkness, she slowly lifted her head, and then there was another flash of lightning. The heavy fabric of the curtains rustled, bolts of light streaming between the gaps. Yeah, I'm waiting for the flash of light showing her. Yeah. Also, the, the voices in the soundtrack really does not help how creepy this is. Her flexant irises glimmered. Though, in the bluish-white light, they took on a twinge of almost golden glow. Yeah, her flexant irises, uh, an almost golden glow. If you remember, uh, the silver hair girl has ruby eyes. No need to be so rough. This isn't the first time she's visited your bedchamber. Is it, Mel? Look, talking she? Or did I not kiss you the same way? Oh, well, no, because the other time she did not kiss him. She attempted to choke him. Not in the sexual way. Tell me, how does she run her fingers across her skin? Uh, attempted very tightly. Preferably on the neck. What does she do when she nuzzles up to you? Attempt to choke him. S -s stop stop this madness, Nelly. What well, why would you why would you do this? Because you like white hair, don't you, Mel? Actually I think he was more um fascinated by her ruby eyes. The silver hair was a plus, but the ruby eyes was what really caught him. You like white hair, which is why you fell for her, isn't it? <laughs> so if I have white hair, then you fall for me too. And I can be your princess again, dear Smell. Well, what are you even talking about? He could not escape from her, from his sister's piercing gaze. Why? What happened? How could she... Questions crashed the young men's mind like waves in a stormy sea. But none of them found answers. They simply caused him further perplexity. Y your hair? What happened to your hair? How did you get it that color? Oh, this? <laughs> yup, yup. <laughs> you like my wig? Yeah, she made a wig. Mm -hmm. <gasps> but as soon as the words left her mouth, Mel was in motion, propelled by pure instinct. He clenched Nelly's shoulders tight enough to dig his fingers into her flesh. <sighs> You're hurting me, Mel. Well, what did you do to her? Tell me. What did you do? I made her leave. It was a perfectly reasonable decision. She was obviously not nobility, and does hardly fit to be the part part of this household. But there's no need to worry, Mel. I'm here to take her place. You sound like a mad woman, yeah. And see, I was always worried about this, ever since they had that talk about him being her prince when they were kids. Of course, this went even further beyond that I expected. It doesn't matter if she was of noble blood or not. She promised she would stay by my side. So why, how could you do that to her? I promised you that love before she ever did. And I, I love you far more than she did, Mel. Have you lost your mind? You're not making any sense. Where is she now? What is she doing? It's always her with you. What's, what's more could you want from me? Tell me, what does she have that I don't? I prefer not answer that, because otherwise you're just gonna t 
take her eyes out and try to make your own. And that's even creepier than the hair. What do I have to get to you to focus on me and only me? We're siblings. Get a hold of yourself. Don't you understand what you're doing? Oh, I understand it quite well. Far better than you do, dearest Mel. Okay, that part, yeah, she kind of has some more information than Mel does. I even know that a former queen was executed for it. But if we don't get caught, there's no problem. No, no, there's more. It's not just about getting caught, Nelly. There's way more problems than that. Nelly, you... Are you saying you you always felt this way about me? Yeah, yeah, that's what I feared. Oh my, you didn't notice, dearest Mel? You truly are a dense one. I guess romance just is in your strong suit. But you've noticed now, haven't you? You know exactly how I feel about you, right? Quit it. Enough. Don't say anything else please stop stop having these insane feelings for me it's disgusting <laughs> what well, what are you laughing about poor poor Mel content in your complete ignorance all right I'll tell you everything oh here it comes Mel you can only love blood related women. What a way to put it. Huh? His cackling sister appeared to him like some kind of inhuman life form. Oh, yeah, she's gone insane. Her actions and incomprehensible exclamations slowly drained him of his strength. What kind of Deranged nonsense is that? I love her. She's your sister, Mel. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. How far out of your mind have you gotten, Ellie? Poor, poor, poor Mel. Do you honestly know nothing? Say that her father was a painter? Mm hmm. He painted pictures for a living. Well, what of it? For a time, her fi father painted for a family. Uh, for a time, her father painted for a family. You've seen the pictures before, dearest Mel. The one hanging in my room of the two of us. That was painted by her father. <laughs> he did a good job, didn't he? I kept asking and asking until you finally agreed to hold my hand. And how did you feel about that? You were rather embarrassed, weren't you? Do you remember that day, dearest Mel? <laughs> you couldn't possibly remember it. But there's a chance you might remember this. Before we moved to this mansion, we had a painter with a white hair. I, I don't remember any such thing. He was long ago a painter in service of the Rhodes family, but that painter did something very, very naughty, and because of that, he couldn't remain a part of our household. Do you know what he did exactly, Mel? He lay with mother. My father was chased from your house. If the child had been born with flaxen hair, then the painter would not have been thrown out. The baby would have been accepted as part of the family, but that wasn't how it turned out. The child had white hair. She didn't look at all like she cared to rose family blood. But see, mother had me. <laughs> that, that I'm here is all the proof you need. The girl, born 16 years ago, didn't have flexing hair. 
up until his last breath. He was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his hands through my hair, an apologetic look on his face. Y you're talking nonsense. W what proof do you have? If you want to see it, I'll gladly show you. The artist left a message in the painting in my room. Tell me, am I truly wrong? In her deduction, probably not. In her um, psychotic love of her brother, yes. What did that girl tell you? you you're lying. What part of it is to lie exactly, dearest Mel? Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Why don't you go ask mother then? <laughs> I'm sure she would throw quite the fit. M mother wouldn't. Oh my god, I'm just realizing here that it was their mother that took the girl in. So the mother probably knows that that girl is her daughter. Oh my god. The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. Yep, I put together just before. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. It, it never made sense to me. Why would she hire a maid she knew nothing about? Someone who just showed up at the door one day. And when I asked mother to make her my maid, she stubbornly refused. From good house? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. And yet, yeah, she wanted the silver hair girl to be her maid, the, the mom's maid, you know? Just to be at the mom's side and not connected to the other ones. If she were really nobility, she would have given us her name. But mother was so desperate to cover up her mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense. I, I don't believe a word you're saying. Couldn't possibly be true. Wouldn't it be nice if you could bury your head in the sand? But no, fainting, fainting is ignorance. is a sin. Did you know that? No, I refuse to believe it. Not a chance in hell or heaven. You just don't understand anything. How I feel. How much I suffered. Do you have any idea how long I loved you? Knowing that you would never accept my affection. But, but then, fancy that. You fell in love with your half-sister. Then I should qualify for your love too. Shouldn't I, Mel? Yup, there's a laugh. Stop it. Enough. Shut your mouth. Not another word. I I don't I don't believe any of this. Mel <laughs> I know you never love me. I know there's nowhere for me to run. Say when we were kids, was that really me? Was I really by your side, Mel? If that painting tells the whole truth, I was never, never once that I get to be your princess. Not even once. Okay. Okay. Who turned the creepiness factor up to 11? Um, no, I think we're stopping here. An inescapable labyrinth. Oh boy. So yeah, the story took quite a turn. Um Mel was going on a date with the silver hair girl. Meanwhile, Nelly was having to deal with her fiance, Arthur, having an attack after seeing Mel with the girl, she went home 
got sad, cried, went to rip the painting off, uh, apart about of her and her brother when she realized that it was a secret to the painting, a secret message. And putting things together, she realized that the girl in the painting wasn't her, but a future version of another girl. Well, putting together information really fast, she figured out that the silver hair girl is a half-sibling, a daughter of her mother and the painter. And then she went crazy, very yandere, like, I don't know what she did to the silver hair girl, I don't know if she just cut her hair or done anything else to her, but she went crazy with her love for her brother as she revealed everything to him. Honestly, this episode took quite a turn I had never expected to. Granted, I was fearful that her love for her brother wasn't just a sibling love, but this took that to 11. I, I'm without words. Well, but I guess that's all for today. I'm gonna have a week to just simmer this in and try to make do with this information but with that being said see you next time bye